If the Zone or even Sky want to improve the quality of their broadcast team, they wouldn't be going wrong by headhunting this guy who works for Frank Warren and he does stuff on Warren's YouTube channel. I'm not even sure this guy's name, but he is a media trained guy who is, well, he's that rare thing, a media trained guy who actually has some semblance of actual banter, not the dead banter that you hear from Darren Barker and all those guys, but actual banter that will make you chuckle a bit. This is the guy. Yeah, he needs to be headhunted by a sky or the zone because he's actually fine. And don't rein him in. Don't prevent him from being cheeky because he's cheeky. That's one of the things that makes this guy funny. He's cheeky. In the run-up to the Fury-White fight, he was interviewing a bunch of people and whatever, and he was stirring the pot. <laughs> he, he was talking to Carl Frampton and saying, oh, John Fury's around here. Have you seen him? And, you know, he's doing all that kind of stuff, stirring the pot. And here with Joyce and Joe Parker, I'm going to paraphrase, but he said that I was warned, he's speaking to these two in this interview, he said, I was warned that this would be like the worst trash talk of all time between you two. <laughs> because as we know, Joe Parker and Joe Joyce are not exactly the most uh, colorful personalities. Let's just say that. They're not exactly the greatest talkers. And, you know, him coming out with that little cheeky remark, Joe Joyce took it in good humor. And that's one of the things about Joyce. He is, should I even call it? Look, he is uh, not very verbally skilled. Let's just put it that way to be diplomatic about it. Yeah. But he knows that he's kind of a slow talker, etc., And he is willing to laugh at himself in that regard. Joe Parker didn't take it quite so well. He seemed to get a little defensive when the guy said this and get all serious. And Joe Joyce kind of tried to settle it down a little bit by turning to the little man and saying, never mind fighting each other, let's get him instead. So, you know, he was all in good humor. But uh, yeah, this cheeky little guy here would be an asset to Sky or the Zone. But again, he works for Frank Warren. I'm not sure if they can po poach him or something like that. But they need more people like this who are at the very least a bit cheeky. Because it makes things more fun. It makes things more interesting. But with regards to this fight here, you know, I've been talking about the presenter. With regards to this fight here, it's a good fight. It hasn't yet been signed. Frank Warren is putting these guys on camera uh, in front of each other, as he did at the Fury White fight, as if the fight already is signed and it's not. Maybe he was trying to distract from the poor undercard. The only thing on the undercard that was of any interest was that fight between... Isaac Lowe, Tyson Fury's little mate, and uh, that little Scouser. I forget the Scouser's name now. But that little Scouser was actually quite skillful, and he threw some nice shots and ended up battering Isaac Lowe. That was <laughs> quite an uh, impressive little performance there by that tiny little pint-sized Scouser. I think he's about 5'2". Maybe I'll talk about that in a separate video. But this fight here between Joe Parker and Joe Joyce, I hope it actually gets signed. I hope that it isn't just one of these fights that gets used, you know, potential fight that gets used to, I don't know, keep Frank Warren's stable in the minds and the consciousness of the public. But if it does happen, um, who would win? I think that with Joe Joyce, he is very deceptive in terms of how good he actually is because you see him in some fights even fights that he's won, right? He's undefeated. But you see him in certain fights like against Stavern and against Takam, and you think, wow, this guy's so slow. He's so beatable. He's so hittable. But then you see him against Daniel Dubois where he gets on his bike and he does have fast feet. I've been saying this since the beginning. If you watch his pro debut against Ian Lewison, he showed he had fast feet there. Joyce has got very slow hands, but he's got fast feet. And... In the Daniel Dubois fight, he used those fast feet and he used his jab to win the fight quite comfortably. If he can do the same thing against Joseph Parker, as in use his feet, use a jab, because the one thing about speed, which Parker has in abundance, he's got quick feet and he's got quick hands. The one thing that you can use to combat speed 
is a good jab. Vernon Forrest showed this years ago when he fought Shane Mosley. And if I was advising or coaching Joe Joyce, not that I am, and he's got great people, I'm sure, much more qualified and better than me to coach him. But, but if I was, I would say, look at Vernon Forrest against Shane Mosley and replicate that. Joe Parker, the shorter guy like Mosley was shorter than Vernon Forrest. Vernon Forrest stuck Mosley on the end of a jab. Mosley couldn't get past it. Obviously, Joe Parker is not exactly like Mosley. He does things differently, etc. But the same principle applies. Stick him on the end of a jab. Force him to try and come forward and get at you. Joe Parker has shown that he's not the best at coming forward and hunting guys down, seek and destroy. That's not really his forte. He does a bit better when guys are in the middle of the ring or when they come at him. But when he has to go looking for people, he isn't always the best at that. And so Joe Joyce, if he can stick him on the end of a jab, and Joyce is very physically strong. So on the inside, Joyce will be able to wrap this guy up, etc. Now, Joe Parker, of course, is an unofficial member. No, is he an official member? Whatever you want to call him. Let me say he's an unofficial family member of Team Fury. And perhaps I'll do a video talking about or speculating about why Parker is so close to the Furies these days. Because it's, it's a strange thing, isn't it? He fought Huey Fury. And then after the Huey Fury fight, he became really close with Tyson. Very strange thing. And Tyson and Huey have now become estranged. So that fight right there was a pivotal moment in the Fury family. Because something happened in and around that fight that split the Fury family off in different directions and Fury left Hennessy. And, you know, a lot of stuff happened around that Huey Fury Joseph Parker fight, which again, I'll come on to maybe in a separate video. But Joe Parker has been sparring Tyson Fury for a long time. He's inside that Fury camp, he's trained by Andy Lee. And maybe he now knows how to deal with a big guy like a Joe Joyce better because of all that experience in the gym with Tyson Fury. Although, Joe Parker says he's never done full contact sparring with Tyson Fury. It's only ever been body sparring, which is interesting. And he's not sure exactly why Tyson Fury won't do full contact sparring with him. He says, maybe he feels sorry for me or something, etc. cetera. Um, I think that the fact Joe Parker won't fight Tyson Fury is indicative of Parker's mentality, his mindset. Bear in mind, he didn't grow up with Tyson Fury. It's not like they're childhood friends or something. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the fact he won't fight Fury, and he said this on many occasions, and Fury said the same thing. Obviously, they contradict each other sometimes. And uh, you know, Fury was saying that Joe Parker was actually the reserve fighter. Who, if Dylan White had pulled out, Joe Parker would have stepped in. And I know that they were saying all this kind of stuff. But on many other occasions, they've said they would never fight each other. And to me, this is a weakness. This demonstrates a weakness in the mentality of Joe Parker because he's essentially become a Fury lackey, a Fury fanboy. And for an active former world champion, top contender to not want to fight the best or one of the best fighters in the division, you know, this doesn't bode well in my view. I much prefer Tyson Fury's mentality when he went to Germany, when he was invited over to, well, I'm not sure if it was Germany, it may have been Switzerland or wherever the Klitschko's were having their camp. And he was invited over there by Andy Lee. And this is when Fury was maybe just British champion. And he was asked whether he was impressed by Klitschko and he said, not at all. <laughs> I like that kind of attitude or Errol Spence's attitude. When as uh, amateur just turning over pro, he was in the Mayweather camp and he wasn't impressed at all by Mayweather. They sparred and he put it on Mayweather. Mayweather tried to punk, this is an American term, tried to punk Spence after the sparring session and said, ah, oh, you're, you're all right for a you-know-what. <laughs> I'm not going to use the word in case the algorithm whatever, but he tried to punk Spence after the sparring session and Spence said, okay, get back in the ring. Let's spar again and let's keep going until one guy drops. 
That was Spence in Mayweather's gym when Spence just turned over from amateur to pro. That's the kind of attitude I want to see in a fighter. <laughs> I don't want to see them looking up and in awe of other fighters in their own division when you're supposed to be a contender. Nah, man. Joe Joyce, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't have, or as far as I'm aware, doesn't have that mentality like Joseph Parker, whereby he's looking up to other people in the division. No. Joyce comes across as like, you know, the BFG, the big friendly giant, this lumbering, <laughs> slightly s slow individual with a good sense of humor. But in the ring, Joe's about his business and he's ambitious. He's, I think, 36 year years of age now. He's not getting no younger. He's about his business. I respect that. And he's looking to fight everybody. Joe Joyce is looking to fight AJ. He's looking to fight Yusek. He's looking to fight Fury. He's looking... <laughs> This guy's looking to fight everybody. I respect that. I'm not saying that he's going to be able to beat everybody, but I respect the fact that he's looking to fight anyone and no one is off limits. I prefer that mentality over the mentality of Parker, who seems to almost have the mindset of being satisfied with second place or even third place. That seems to be the mentality of Joseph Parker. Satisfied not being the best heavyweight in the division. Well, if that's your mindset, then you're going to end up like Derek Chisora or something. Yeah. So I've got to be, you know, stylistically, I could see how Parker could beat Joe Joyce. Stylistically, you know, athletically, all this kind of stuff. But the mentality of Joyce, to me, is a lot more conducive to success than the mentality of Parker. So while I might want to pick Parker because of his speed and all that kind of stuff, I may lean towards Joyce because of what I perceive to be a superior mentality. And of course, he does have the dimensions, the fast feet, the ability to get behind the jab. But let me know what you guys think about this potential fight in the comment section below.